This episode of Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by the Chugach Alaska Corporation. One, two, three, four, let's go. It's Heartbeat. It's a fabulous show. Alaska. Hi, Heartbeat Alaska. It's Heartbeat. <laughs> Alaska. Pull up a chair and enjoy the show. You hear it from Sitka to Barrow. Gather around. For genius show, it's the Elliot, the Indian, and the Eskimo. It's the Elliot, the Indian, and the Eskimo. Welcome one, welcome all. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we travel to one of the most beautiful cities in the world, to Seward, Alaska. We were invited there by the Katuchik Native Tribe for their annual Tribal Sobriety powwow. What a fabulous time we had. Some call it the gateway to Alaska. Others call it the original beginning of the Iditarod Trail. But for those who live in the small town of Seward, Alaska, it's known as home. is named after William H. Seward, U.S. Secretary of State from 1861 to 1869, and the man responsible for negotiating the purchase of Alaska from Russia in 1867. But it was long before the purchase of Alaska that this area was discovered. It was in 1792 that Russian fur trader and explorer Alexander Baranov, who, while sailing from Kodiak to Yakutat, found unexpected shelter from a storm in this quiet and protected bay. He named the body of water Resurrection Bay because it was the Russian Sunday of the resurrection. Almost a century later, after the purchase of Alaska from Russia, the first settlers arrived in Resurrection Bay and began construction of a railroad. In 1912, Seward became an incorporated city and an important part of Alaska's history. By following popular trails used by Alaska's native people, a trail from Seward to Nome was mapped and marked by the U.S. Army in 1908. The Seward to Nome Mail Trail, as it became known, served as a lifeline for miners and mail haulers who relied primarily on dog sleds for transporting gold rush freight and news from below. The introduction of the airplane caused a decline of trail use in the mid-20th century. With the construction of the railroad between 1915 and 1923, Seward developed as the ocean terminus and supply center of Alaska, and by 1960, it was the largest community on the Kenai Peninsula. Today, Seward remains an important supply center for interior Alaska and a popular tourist attraction during the summer for hundreds of thousands of sightseers each year. But inevitably, seasons change. We hear the trees speaking to us, telling us to prepare for winter as they cover the ground in a golden blanket of leaves. Residents secure their belongings and winterize their wardrobes while the birds take flight for warmer climates, and the residents of their town get their town back as it returns to its quiet cell. Quiet, except for the rustling of the leaves and the distant thunder beyond Mount Marathon. everyone and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. I'm Jeannie Green. We're here in Seward, Alaska for the sobriety powwow put on by Katukchik Native Tribe. It's going to be a great day. Come on, let's dance. Yeah. 
This weekend, the Katuchik Native Tribe brought together people from afar to have a potluck celebrating sobriety and the many Native people of America. Visitors from far away as Florida were at the sobriety powwow to honor and respect those who have chosen to live a life that is free from the chokehold of drug and alcohol addiction. My grandpa, he heated his house with a Toyo stove, and um, I don't think there's nothing better. It's very easy to operate. You can program it where you can go to work for the day, come back, and um, have your Toyo kick on before you get home, start heating your house for you. It's very, very cold out there sometimes, and I know that this year in the Iditarod, I'm going to be thinking about my Toyo stove. The Toyo Stove, heating Alaska for generations. My sister Barbara and John Young started this sobriety powwow 13 years ago with the idea that uh, the young warriors in the, in the native tribes, they feel like they don't, they're not needed. So they turn to alcohol and drugs. Well, we decided back then that uh, they need to be warriors again, but warriors against alcohol and, and drugs. Even here in Seward, in Hooper Bay where I am from, Alcohol has devastated our family. And the reason for that, the reason why we get addicted so quickly as Alaska Natives, and this is medical fact, that 70% of us do not have the genes to break down alcohol correctly. So 70% of us are allergic to alcohol. Alcohol takes away your ambition it makes you less of a person. And we were never meant to be less than what God made us. We are made to be strong and beautiful and proud. And the only way you can be that is to be sober. The powwow served as a platform for many speakers to share their knowledge and experiences with alcohol in their lives. But even more important, it was an opportunity to teach the youth who attended the powwow about the power of living a clean life. It's a good uh, way for people to gather and share stories about sobriety. I think it's important that my generation start talking to our children and grandchildren about what alcohol and drugs can do. 
ruin your life? It was just the thing to do. And you guys know what I'm talking about. It was the thing to do. Your buddies and all oh, that bar music. How fun is that? Oh, wow, you go out and you start boogieing down and you just have a good time. And I thought that's what life was all about. I thought that is fun until I learned something. I learned that when you use drugs or alcohol, you don't have a life. The addiction controls you. And that is why this powwow was put together to celebrate the strengths of those who have overcome the slavery of addiction and to teach others how to do the same. We want to celebrate you guys, all of us being sober. Um, let me see who's been sober for eight hours. Right on. One day. You know, it really is one day at a time. Two days. Three days. A week. Four weeks. Come on up. Sober for four weeks, that is hard to do. This means something. This means a start. Two months, between six months and a year sober, holler out. A year and 18 months, three and a half to four years, five and a half, seven to eight years sober. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, I, this, I get chills. 11 years. 20 years sober. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now we're starting to get into the golden years. 26 years. Is somebody here that's never had a birthday? One by one, the stage filled as the audience got smaller, a testament to the strength and pride of our nation's first people. I go to the gatherings for the to watch the growth of the movement of sobriety. I think it's been growing slow, and I think it gets a little bigger. And more people are attending than when I got involved four years ago. I see a little more growth every year, and I keep coming back year after year because I get excited about more people attending. And getting involved. The alcohol free movement, it's going great guns clean across Alaska. You know, it's just, uh, it's taking hold and it's moving. It brings our culture back together. It brings everybody together so the kids can learn from the older generations to pass, pass down the, you know, the legends and everything. And what better way to pass down the knowledge than through song and dance? Kenai, Alaska. I'm an Athabascan from Kenai, but I was taught this from the lower 48 from a Navajo family that I was adopted into. I was originally a fancy dancer and then I got married and had kids, so I switched to traditional about 10 years ago. It's a traditional regalia with mainly eagle feathers, leather, beadwork. There's more traditional things involved in it. A lot of it's my Athabascan side. Like I have my flowers in there to show that I'm Athabascan, you know. And it was a lot of it was taught to me from Lakota Indians and it's just from all over. Well, powwows were a celebration of the Indian tribes, where the people would get together and celebrate. Whether it was to uh, drum up spirit for a war, drum up spirit for good hunting season. You know, uh, a good season of fishing or whatever. Uh, the powwows were made
for Native people to come together and celebrate. So it was a natural thing that Native people come together and celebrate without alcohol. So we just we glommed onto it, and, it, and it's working. It works good. People like to see the other dancers. People like to hear different Native music. Uh, so it, it brings them in. And, it, and, and if they're just sober for an afternoon, then it's worth it. It gives me a great sense of pride. It makes me excited to see kids with a sparkle in their eye and smiling and having fun. And that's a feeling that every parent and adult should have when they, when they and have pride of the kids and see how hard they work at. I'm an Athabascan and uh, this is Clinket. This is a raven and that's my Athabascan flag. I get to dance and, my, and I can dance my culture. So I can learn stuff and when I get older, I can, if they like want me to dance with them, I can know how to dance with them. But more than just dancing, this powwow represents centuries of wisdom and knowledge that can be summed up in one word. Respect for your elders, respect for the land, respect for yourself. We try to teach all that to our young men of respect. It's this respect that has created change for many of the people gathered here today. A respect for their culture, a respect for their children, a respect for themselves. Getting sober was easy. Learning to live sober is the hard part. The main thing is, is to stay busy. The biggest thing when I was drinking was, I'm bored, I'm gonna go downtown. And so if you stay busy, there's no need to go downtown, you know? You could party sober like we're doing here. They start at an early age. I mean, like, versus my generation, you know, we weren't so we weren't such social creatures, you know, and that's what it what's changed so much. You know, I mean, everything is about socialization, and I think when kids can learn at a younger age, they have a better chance of going on to a higher education as they get older and it builds your self, their self-confidence. And I think that that probably, the help that I see when watching these kids for four years, you know, their, their self-confidence just grows and they feel better about themselves. Them. I think we, we as parents and adults, we have to take our children out on outings, camping, fishing, and spend more time with them. I think if parents spent more time with their children, that would be a, probably the most positive motivator that could be. Personally, I just like to lead by example instead of talk. I've heard too much, too much rhetoric talk in my life from people who said don't do this and don't do that and yet they're doing it you know I'd rather be a role model than a deadbeat it makes me feel better inside and seeing other people that really want to live life sober there's more to life than partying your actions you always remember your actions will have some kind of impact on the people around you. So it's not just about you. It's about your whole atmosphere around you. 
and all the people that fit in your circle. So if, if you want to have a good influence on them, you have to start right in the center, start with yourself. And so the day comes to an end. The birds seek shelter for the night, and the people who travel from near and afar return home a little wiser and stronger in who they are. They are the people who are walking the trail of sobriety, like their ancestors before them, and their ancestors before them. So stay sober, stay happy. Hey, hey. July 2006. My dream 4th of July. The reason? It was in Seward, Alaska, and I was part of the parade. I went to junior high and high school in Seward, Alaska, and a great deal of my family lived there. Many friends and relatives. It was very, very special. Today we'll take a look at the parade and much more. We'll show you how many people showed up to build the award-winning Heartbeat Alaska float. And building a float, I found out, was no small thing and neither was a float. It took many, many hours of pounding and hitting those two by fours just to build the infrastructure on this 45 foot flatbed supplied by Carlisle Transportation. That's my husband Dennis Green there and my brother Kenny Blatchford. Every tool we had was used in making this float, but it was okay. We were right on the shores of beautiful Resurrection Bay. Three days of putting flowers in chicken wire and hammering two by fours, holding down tarp, holding down tarp and holding down tarp, all getting ready for the big day. Hill, and <laughs> that's probably the probably the most uh, 
I think we really had the hardest time was going up going uphill because we were on foot and had two hills in a row and before the audience started to uh, see the audience a little bit so I know a lot of our dancers uh, got pretty tired first first couple of blocks. <laughs> oh look at that. So uh, we re-energized us and we started, uh, I guess, uh, drawing their, their energy because they were clapping and cheering. So it made us work a little bit harder. And so by the end of the parade, uh, I was pretty beat. <laughs> very good response uh, by well, the whole group did and uh, they really like us because uh, a lot of times uh, the native uh, groups ain't uh, been uh, represented in a lot of different functions uh, well non non traditional functions and so when we started going through the crowds and they're cheering and hooting hollering and they're happy to see us and so we put on a real good show and um, it's just uh, something that we like doing is uh, showing who we are and we try to put the best show as we possibly can out there. Sharing the native culture from all the way up north, Point Hope, Alaska, was a joy this year. And Heartbeat Alaska brought Point Hope dancers just for this parade. They did their best, and their best excited the crowd as they sang traditional Inupiat songs. The Frankston family, what a fabulous group of people willing to share, as is their tradition for thousands of years. My dream came true, participating in the 4th of July parade in Seward. And we brought Heartbeat Alaska to Seward. We brought hope and joy and fun and shared our culture with everyone and they shared their joy and applause with us i don't know who had more fun but we'd like to thank you seward alaska for your generosity for your fabulous opportunity you gave us to share our native culture with you i think we all came away with something special i know i did